We're here in Rumson, New Jersey. This is going to be a structural beam job. The particular job we're doing here is a structural reinforcement. The customer wanted these columns removed that you see here. She wanted an open floor plan. So in order for us to get this done, we have to reinforce the beams and the beams have got to be sized. This particular job has got offset dead loads up above, which means that the floor plan is split up. The beams are not directly up underneath of the walls up above. We have to tear into the ceiling to find out where the framing is located so we can get a drawing put together. We also need to locate the wires because these are typically running right alongside of beams. Uh, pipes also you have to be concerned with so you have to actually find out where those are before you get a plan together to figure out how you're going to get these beams seated. The engineer required us to reinforce the footings and the walls so here we're chopping out the concrete. This particular area here is where one of uh, uh, the columns are going to be going. They're actually going to be going past that but uh, we had to undermine that slab floor uh, in order to get our rebar in. We're putting number five rebar into this building a cage. You can see the wall there. The columns are actually going to be buried into that wall so our footing is actually going to be up underneath of that. Here we're chopping out the uh, the wall, the foundation wall. It was a 12 inch block wall. It needed to be reinforced with number five rebar and a core fill. The engineer wanted that to be a solid wall so uh, the beams would not be crushing the foundation. Here we're shoring up uh, the floor structure up above to make sure that nothing moves. And this is an area where the shorter beam, the 25 foot beam, is going to be seated. You can see that there's plumbing in the way, so that had to be removed. We also need to chop a hole into the foundation. If you look close, you would see the plumbing there that needed to, to be removed because it was in the way. When they delivered the beams uh, on site, they had them flipped the wrong way, so we needed to flip them over and get the flange on the right side. You can see here that we're grabbing the flange of the beam with the edge of a large forklift so we can get it to the point to where we can move it around. You have to be able to get these beams uh, measured out in the center for the forklift to be able to pick them up correctly otherwise it would be teetering back and forth kind of like a seesaw as you can see we're not moving real fast we want to try to minimize any chance of uh, that beam teetering in any way if it kind of flips and teeters on that uh, forklift it would easily punch a hole through that front wall so we want to move real slow. You can see we got blocking down. This beam here is the 30 foot beam that's going in. That is a W12 by 190. And that's going to be set aside because the shorter beam, the 25 foot 6 beam, is the one that has to go in for, uh, into the basement first. So we're going to set this down, be very careful, as you can see we don't uh, have it teetering back and forth, get it down on the blocks. Now you can see that that forklift there is a pretty large forklift and it's going to end up doing some damage to the lawn so the lawn is going to need to be repaired. If you look at the beam you can see that the flange is pretty thick the web is thick you can see where the hole of the foundation is so 
We've set aside that 30 foot beam and we're gonna come in with this 25 foot beam. That's going to be our first beam going in. That was the single column that you saw down below. So we'll get this into its proper place, moving very carefully. The way that we've got this, you can look close up against that wall. You can see we're actually about six inches away from that siding of the front wall, moving very slow, getting it into place. We've got to position it just right so we can uh, get it into that penetration of the foundation. We don't want to be moving that beam left or right. We want it exactly in line where we need it to be. Now that we got the beam in place, you can see here directly in line, that's going to be pushed into the basement through that foundation penetration. We'll be using the forklift for that. You can see the thickness of the flange here, size of the beams. These beams are very heavy. This would be an extreme situation. Ordinarily, we would not have beams this size, but this particular house, the engineer required us to have uh, very large beams. There's a peek down into the basement. You can see where we gotta go. There isn't a whole lot of clearance here. This is generally how it is. You want just enough clearance to get the beams in safely. Now the forklift needed to be modified a little bit, so we ended up moving the forks close together. This is so we can grab that flange, each side of the web of that beam, and we're going to be pushing that in very slowly into the basement. Down in the basement, we've got large dollies that are designed to hold this weight so we can move these beams around in the basement. The 25 foot beam that you're looking at here is gonna have to actually get shifted to the left about five or six feet and set on the offset of the foundation. If you look at the front porch there to the left, you can barely see it. That's about where that beam has got to go on the offset of that foundation. can see that there's bushes that needed to be removed. Those will just be going back in. In place, we took them out and set them aside. It was at the end of winter here, so it shouldn't hurt them too much. They should survive. Here you can see uh, we're pushing the beam in, going very slow, getting them up on the dollies. So we're gonna head down the rabbit hole here to the basement. This is where all the action's gonna be going. You can see those dollies are in place. These dollies are designed to hold beams this weight. You can see our beam is actually into the wall itself. We're gonna move these dollies over so the beam can end up resting on them and we can be moving them around. Now, as I mentioned earlier, that beam is going to be going uh, offset from the main beam. And you're looking at uh, the area here, right at that corner of the foundation of where that 25 foot beam is gonna be. These again are those dollies. I just wanted to give you an example of what the size of the dollies are. They do have wheels and casters on them that'll hold that type of weight. Having the 25 foot beam in, we now need to get this 30 footer in there. This is the main beam uh, that is going to be taking care of the two columns. If you remember in the basement, there was that hole that we had cut into the foundation and that is the location where the columns are going to be placed inside of the wall right past that footing. 
Here you can see the thickness of the beam, the width of the beam. Again, this is an extreme example of uh, structural beams. Usually they are not this large. You can see the flange is actually an inch and three quarter. So this is a very large beam. We're not uh, really going to get any deflection on this at all. It's going to hold the loads up above uh, just fine. It's actually oversized. Uh, when I looked at the engineer's calculations, he was extremely conservative. So I guess he didn't want any issues. You can see the plumbing there that had to be removed. You can see a no hub fitting there where we had put the plumbing back together. The foundation there, the beam is seated on top of. The column that's going to be already removed as you see. You can see we got it up on the dolly. Those particular dollies hold a lot of weight. I believe it's 2,000 kilograms, so it's about 44, 4,500 pounds, uh, which is more than enough uh, for these particular beams. This beam, uh, now that it's seated on the foundation, that dolly is only holding half of the weight, so it's more than enough. Here you can see we got the beam temporarily shimmed up. You can see it cleared the plumbing just enough, maybe a couple inches. So they didn't have to do any crazy modifications with their plumbing. And all of that needed to be factored in with the sizing of this particular beam. So you can see here, we got it up on the dolly. That particular beam is just being temporary held, temporarily held in place. This is where the original beam was located, so there really is going to be no change with the soffit. It'll be able to be framed in just as it was before we started. There's the foundation penetration that's going to have to be repaired, reparged. And you can see where the beam is seated on top of the foundation there and ready to get permanently seated. There again, you can see the plumbing modifications, not too serious, it wasn't a big deal at all. The beams are seated now, so we've got to get the columns in. You put a flange up and then weld that, the columns, those particular columns, there's two columns and they're buried in the wall. You can see that there's wires are gonna have to be stapled back up onto the soffit framing or the floor joist, however the electrician or remodeler is gonna do that. We put a laser on these beams and we received zero movement. We inspected the upstairs. There's absolutely no changes in any of the elevations. Floors are level, no damage to the floors. You got a side view of the column. This is gonna be buried into the wall so you won't even know that they're there. That footing that we reinforced is down below that. Of course, we're gonna to have to patch that foundation wall. So this is our patch. That's our first patch that's gonna be going in. And it's a little too cold to stucco right now. It's starting to get late in the day once we patch that uh, wall penetration. You're looking at where the columns uh, used to be. They're removed and then we grind that down so there's no sharp edges. You can actually see the metal and the core of the column of where it was, the framing that was surrounding it. Now there's just a slab floor. This is your finished product with uh, no columns in the basement. The customer's got an open floor plan now. So, uh, it's exactly what the doctor ordered. These are the beams finished. You can see the columns up against the wall. And the foundation is uh, taking care of the rest of the load and the columns are removed. So we've got a successful job here. Exactly what the customer wanted. And if you need something like this done, give us a call. We'll take a look at it.